Uh, go ahead and turn to John 14 for me. We were kicking off a series. We just wrapped up anniversary month, and I felt that the Lord had put on my heart a while ago that where we need to come off of celebrating the anniversary was, was just really this place um, and engaging the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit is so key and significant in our life. At the same time, I realize that is kind of a topic that can um, bring a whole lot of feelings and emotions. I understand that we're talking about the Holy Spirit and different aspects of Him. Uh, it is one that perhaps it seems to be like taboo in the church. Let's stay away from that topic. And those controversial topics, people won't come back. Hey, if you come back or not, I gotta bring you the truth. The rest is up to you. And so uh, that's what I'm gonna do because we believe in the person and power of the Holy Spirit here at Trigger Life Church. And we have for 40 years. And we've seen the result of all that, the faithfulness of God and God's expression in the Holy Spirit. And so for the whole month, I wanna ask everybody, I'm not sure where you land on the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit activity. I, I wanna take the whole month and just uh, bring you the message of truth and God's word so you can make a decision for yourself. You know, what's interesting is when you're talking about the Holy Spirit, what I find out when people are really have differing opinions, I, I don't, and I have discussions with them, they may differ than my view on it and that's fine, but when I dig into it with them, that they really haven't dug into the word for themselves. Usually it's they've heard somebody else's experience or somebody else's teaching something or they, you know, just what they grew up with. And even there's churches that teach against it, which I don't understand because the Bible's very clear about the Holy Spirit, yet nonetheless we have come in this culture today of kind of being anti. However, we are more and more spiritual. When you say that, right? The climate, everything's becoming more and more spiritual. They're just looking in the wrong place. And so, but the Holy Spirit is so significant for every single one of us as a believer, is in my family. Uh, let me, I always like to say this. And so for some of you right now are like, man, I was just starting to like this church. <laughs> and like, I don't know. And I wanna encourage you, you'll still like it after four weeks, I promise, perhaps even more. And uh, I just wanna encourage you in that. It was funny this morning, uh, my wife, um, so she wanted me to pull a prank on somebody on staff. And uh, I was like, I know that's, that's mean. I'm not gonna do that. And then she said, if you do it, I'll pick out your Sunday morning clothes for the next two weeks. I said, who is it? Where are they? Where? Okay. And uh, so I went this morning to get my shirt and uh, she gave me this shirt with birds on it. And uh, it's actually with dove on it. And I thought, oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so I got doves on my shirt, but I thought how appropriate we're kicking off the series on the Holy Spirit. And then after the pom-pom comment, I thought, wow, actually I'm really wearing the shirt, men, because it's the opening of dove season. I kinda, right, had to get a little back, back from there. I kinda made me feel a little better. And if that doesn't work for you, and you're right, right now you're not liking the topic of the Holy Spirit, going back to a few weeks ago, I wore the shirt in, because this is what I'm gonna wear when doves cry. And, uh, <laughs> right, you'll have to, if you weren't here a couple weeks ago, you have to go back to the uh, 80s titles. But I'm really excited. I love ministering on the Holy Spirit. Two reasons why he is so significant in my life. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't literally be here today in this role if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. My family wouldn't be here. And number two, I, I, I think he's so amazing, but yet so misunderstood. And I think we just need to spend some time bringing a little bit of clarity. And so come, come every installment of the series. Joe McGee is gonna do one of the installments and, and then you decide. But as for me and my house, uh, but let me say this, you, you may not line up with my beliefs on the Holy Spirit and, and I get, and that's okay. That's okay, that's between you and God, between you and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, the most important thing we do is win the lost, right, amen? And so you can get to heaven without the expression of the Holy Spirit, which we'll get to in a few weeks. You can, win the, you can get to heaven without water baptism, but you can't get to heaven without Jesus. And so you may or may not agree with me on this topic. Come every week, reserve you know, your decision until the end. But nonetheless, we can still all work together to reach the lost at all costs, amen? And that's why we exist. So I wanted to say that. So turn to John 14 if you haven't already, verse 16 through 18. Let me start there. And here's what Jesus says. He goes, and I will pray that word translated is ask. I'll ask the Father, God, and he will give you another helper. Say another. Now the implication here is it's another helper, another like Jesus is a helper. Now, that's what it's implying. I'll send you another like me, another translation will be one, another one just like me, another helper. So now we're getting some insight that the Holy Spirit is God, like Jesus is God, like Father God is God. Now I'm gonna mess a little bit with some of your theology this morning, but hang with me, hang in there with me. Don't, don't shut me out. Um, I want to take a look from a different perspective to bring some clarity because we have to establish the fact that the Holy Spirit is God. And we probably, most of us all grew up in, maybe not in church, but grew up with an understanding of the Trinity. You hear it, if you're not in church, you still hear it, that it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. 
But most of our time we spend, or most of the time we spend engaging with God is we engage with God the Father, God the Son, because we understand that. But then there's this piece of God who's just as much God as God the Father, God the Son, called God the Holy Spirit that we just kind of leave aside because we don't understand him and we haven't spent time there. Or he's been controversial from the standpoint of what people have taught or taught against or some of the expressions that we see, or basically, if we say it this way, some of the packaging. And I'll be honest with you, some of the packaging turns me off too. And sadly, people in my profession abuse, misrepresent, and you know, all that kind of stuff. But I wanna tell you that it is so important to build that relationship just as much as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's really God three in one, three different expressions. And so my hope in this series is for you to see that and engage relationally with them. Let me finish the scripture and we'll go on. I'll pray the Father will give you another helper that he, capital H, not the beginning of a sentence, so in the middle of a sentence, it's identifying his significance or importance or his divinity in this case. He will, uh, may abide with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, capital S, Spirit of God, Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. And why are we listening to the world that can't see Him or know Him tell us about the Holy Spirit? I don't know. But you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. Um, I'll not leave you orphans. I'm not gonna leave you alone. I'll come to you. How is He not gonna leave us alone? Well, as we find out in Scripture, He's gonna send another helper, the Holy Spirit, to be with us. What I want you to know this morning is he, the Holy Spirit, is a person. He's a person. Now we have a hard time with that because the translators were looking for an appropriate word and they came in the Old Testament in, in the uh, Hebrew language and they looked in the New Testament, the Greek language, and they came up with Holy Spirit, which is not inappropriate, it's right, but we don't understand that, like God the Father, God the Son, why couldn't it just been like, God the Father, God the Son, God the Nephew, or something like that, right? I mean, we would, and it sounds funny, but we'd relate that way, wouldn't we? God the Father, God the Son, God the Cousin. Maybe the little crazy cousin, but not necessarily, right? It's like, we have a hard time trying to relate with the Spirit, but I wanna tell you that the Holy Spirit is a He, is a person. It's not just some force that, wow, that felt good today. It's not just some force, it's not just some power. It's a He, He's a He. And in fact, the Bible never uses in reference to the Holy Spirit the word it. The Holy Spirit is a he, and it's important for you to understand that because you'll never develop a personal relationship with what you don't see as a person. If you don't see the Holy Spirit as a person, you won't develop a personal relationship, and we all need that. And I'll explain that to you in just a moment, but understand that the Holy Spirit is a he. One God, three expressions, much like the illustration would be H2O, right? H2O, water, H2O. Well, it's water, as water is a liquid, it's water as ice, it's water, if you will, as steam, three expressions of the same thing. It's still all H2O. He's still God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, yet he's still God. And the power of God resides in all three, does it not? And let me ask you this question then, is the Holy Spirit less powerful than God the Father or God the Son? No, he's not, why? Because he's God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And that's why it's important for us to understand that. Now, when we talk about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in a way for us to relate to who he is, understanding he is one of three expressions of God, we have to continually understand that he is God. So Genesis 1, 26, real quick, God's creating the earth and heaven and the earth, he's gone through uh, the majority of the creation process and then he decides to create man and he says this here, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Who's God talking about there? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. If I could say it this way, it's like there's a board meeting with God and God said to God, we should make man in our image and then God said, great idea. Let's do that. Thank you, God. High five, God. High five, God. Great idea. Let's get all this done right now. That's kind of, it's kind of silly and kind of funny, but I want to understand the Holy Spirit's God, like God the Father, God the Son. And we need to understand it because we need to relate to him as that. We need to build relation to him like that. And then so understand this. Then all of a sudden, man's created, and then woman's created, and then sin enters the world. Now all of a sudden, God the Father, who is the creator and the provider, He's built uh, heaven and earth and provided birds and, and fish and land and stars and moon. God the provider then, as sin enters in the garden, the holy God separates himself from a sinful environment. 
God the Father is a holy God and he is separated from a sinful environment. Yet he loves humanity so much that he says, I can't engage or I won't engage in a sinful environment, but I have another part of me, God the Son, I'm gonna provide a way for a sinful humanity than to have a relationship with a holy God who cannot interact in a sinful environment. So God looks at his son who is God and he says, son, you need to take care of this. God the Son says, Father God, I got this. This is my part. I'll do my part. You created and provided all this. Now you've provided a savior. So now it's my turn to step into this, into this world as God and as man and save humanity by paying for their sin. God the Father is separate from a sinful nature or sinful environment. God the Son says, I'll do my part and go be the savior. So God the Son is on the planet for 33 years and then doing his part, he gives his life as a sacrifice for the sin of humanity. He goes to the cross, he's resurrected, he's 40 days on the planet and he gives instruction, he gives the great commission, go into all the world to make disciples and then he tells his disciples to go wait in the upper room, why? So they'll receive power, what power, what power? Holy Spirit power when he falls and then the Bible says, and so then God the Son goes up to heaven so let's take a look at this real quick. What's this next scripture? Mark 16, 19. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. So God the Father sees sin enter into the world. He's separate from a sinful environment, but he wants a relationship with sinful man. So he sends God the Son down to the planet. This is my part, Jesus says. He pays the price and the sacrifice, and what he does in doing that, now a sinful man has been redeemed and can now be with a holy God. And then when he's done, saving humanity, then he goes, the Bible says, and sits at the right hand of the Father. Are you getting the picture here? God the Father, God the Provider, God the Son, God the Savior. And so now, what Jesus says is when I go, we saw that in John 14, I'm gonna send another. Another what? Another part of God? God the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you need God activity on the earth. You need an expression of God on the planet. You need an expression of God moving and working on the planet. And so God then, all of a sudden, he's, he sees this need. And so Jesus says, uh, I'm going to ask Father God. And, and, and he's done his part. He's up there in heaven. In fact, if you wonder where he is, his status, Matthew 6, 9, the Matthew 6, 9 prayer, our Father who art in heaven. In heaven. Where? Because that is a sinless environment. And so Jesus comes to the sinful environment, provides a way through to exchange righteousness, pay the price for sin, and then he ascends, the Bible says, into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. Let's keep going. Luke twenty two sixty nine 69 says, but from now on, the Son of Man will be seated. From now on, the Son of Man will be seated in the place of power at God's right hand until God looks to him and says, it's time to go get my kids. And then he returns to the earth. Until then, Hebrews 10, 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Are you getting the picture? God the Father, who art in heaven, who doesn't engage in a sinful environment, yet loves humanity, that he sends God the Son to do his part, to be the sacrifice, to, pr to pay for the sins of humanity, so now humanity can have a relationship with a holy God, and then he ascends up to heaven and sits down at the right hand of God the Father, but yet God is still here on the earth. How? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit activity. And then too many of us, because we don't understand, we try and keep him away. Because we can relate better to God the Father and God the Son. But maybe it's because we don't understand that God the Holy Spirit is a person as well. And that we need to relate to him. Because we won't relate to what we don't think is relational. We won't have a relationship with what we don't think is personal. And, and so and let, me, let me give you this picture. A, a little, maybe, maybe this will help clear it up. Uh, let me say it this way. When we cry out to God, God help me. God the Father's like, I, I provided. I provided this planet, I provided all these resources, I provided a savior for you. God help me. Jesus is like, like God's looking at Jesus, Jesus is like, I paid the price. I was the sacrifice, I went and I bridged the gap between sin and God and I created a way that mankind can have a relationship with you. I, I, I'm seated up here, I, I did my part. So, so who, are we, who are we really calling out to? And then God the Father looks at God the Son, and God the Son looks at God the... We, and, then like, and here's the Holy... Hey, it's my turn, it's my turn! 
right? And this high energy, right? This, that's my relationship with the Holy Spirit. He's this high energy, super excited. What do you need, Don? I'm here, man. Come on, let's do this. And so the Holy Spirit, it's my turn now. It's my turn to be on the planet with people and I'm never gonna leave them, I'm never gonna forsake them and I'm gonna be their guide and I'm gonna be their leader and I'm gonna teach them truth and I'm gonna reveal things to them that are gone and not of anything else. I'm gonna help them. I'm gonna be their helper. That's me, I'm the helper. It's my turn, it's my turn, I got this. That's my picture of the Holy Spirit, I don't know. Maybe it's because I had too much coffee. I don't know. Which, by the way, all the bags sold out. I don't know what to tell you. And it's like this idea that, why are we separating all this? Because the reality is, the activity that we see on the planet today is God the Holy Spirit. So like when, you and, when you're driving down the road somewhere and you're thinking, man, I'm gonna go here, and all of a sudden something inside of you tells you to, no, don't go that way, go this way, and then you find out, wow, something was going on over there, you didn't need to be there, and you're like, man, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for leading me around that. You know who led you around that? The Holy Spirit? Is he God? Absolutely God did it. But God did it to the Holy Spirit. Some of us won't recognize the Holy Spirit, but he's the one leading us. Amen. He doesn't get the credit. Amen. But we're, we're attributing the credit to so many other things. But it's God, the Holy Spirit, leading us. When you make a decision and like, you're, should I go with them? And I don't think I should just go with them. And thank you, Jesus, for keeping me out of that. You know who kept you out of that? God, the Holy Spirit in you. Leading and guiding you. We'll get into that more next week. I want you to know today that God, the Holy Spirit, He's a person, and he is God, just like the others. And until we get that revelation, we'll never relate to him like we should or like we could. But the activity of God here on the planet now is through the person, presence, and power of the Holy Spirit, our Father who art in heaven, separated from a sinful environment. Jesus, who is seated now, the Savior, did his part seated now at the right hand of the Father. I know this is messing with some of your theology, but now God the Holy Spirit is here active. Well, where's God? He's here. Where's Jesus? He's here. He's the Holy Spirit. He's three in one. I mean, I mean for the, this illustration for just a second, like my, my role right here, I'm pastor leader today. I'm right here in my pastor leader mode. But right here, just a minute ago, right here was my wife and I'm a husband too. And then my daughter's here on the front row, Camry, and, uh, and so I'm a, I'm, a father, I'm, a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm, I'm a pastor. And, and so when my wife needs me, I drop everything else and I go be with my wife, but who comes to be with my wife? Well, right now, I'm op- I, right now I'd be operating as a husband, but I brought the pastor and the father with me. And if I'm doing something church related and all of a sudden my daughter needs me, I drop everything I go and I go find my daughter and, I'm, and to her, I'm, 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 I'm dad, I'm, I'm father, but I brought the husband and the pastor with me. I'm just operating in that expression at that moment. Does that make sense this morning? You have to understand that the Holy Spirit is God. He's just as much God as God the Father and God the Son. He's just as powerful. He's God. It's important for you and I to understand that so we can relate to him as we should. So God the Father, provider, God the Son of Jesus, the Savior, and God the Holy Spirit, the helper. He is the helper. How many of you need help in some area of your life today? Come on. You know what? The, uh, those that didn't raise a hand, you need help in telling the truth. It's just. <laughs> we all need help. Come on. I mean, both hands up, both feet up. That look awkward, but we all need help help. Guess what? He's the helper. Who do you turn to? I'm just going to ask God. Yeah, you are. God, the Holy Spirit. (laughs) And this morning we sang songs. If you remember, we sang songs, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. You're welcome. We didn't sing God, you're welcome here, although that wouldn't have been wrong. Jesus, you're welcome here. That wouldn't have been wrong. When we sang Holy Spirit, you're welcome. I want you to get this because I want you to understand you can cultivate a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You can nurture a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the next few weeks. And it is so important. That's why, that's why the devil wants to keep you from having a relationship with the Holy Spirit because he's the one active on the earth today. His presence and power. And so the devil wants to say things like, that's just crazy fanatical people, and that's not for the church today, or that's goofy, he's gonna, oh, he's gonna come on, and you're gonna be some ventriloquist dummy, and all kinds of stuff's gonna come out of your mouth. And he's gonna say, can I tell you that when you see crazy things, and they attach it to the Holy Spirit, that person was crazy before the Holy Spirit. Can I say that? (laughs) We have a misunderstanding. And I believe, I believe, I believe with all my heart, it's because that the enemy does not want you and I having an intimate relationship with the person, presence, and power of the Holy Spirit. 
because it is so vital for our life. I don't get up here without praying in my heavenly language. I, every day I ask God to lead me. Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me. I'm in situations all the time. These last few weeks have been crazy. We have had seen people pass away. I just had somebody this morning tell me about another loved one that they had just lost. And, and I'm like, it's just so many things. And I'm like, you know, the Holy Spirit, that word helper is translated in another uh, translation, translate, translate, no, translate, there you go. It's, it's called the comforter. And I'm, I'm getting a phone call. I got a phone call the other day when I was sitting at my, at my desk and totally unexpected and someone I knew really well passed away. And in that moment, I'm just like, Holy Spirit, comfort her, comfort me. And I actually, I got a, a, a note passed to me and then I had to call the wife. I had to take a moment and say, Holy Spirit, comfort me. And Holy Spirit, comfort that family. I mean, I don't even have words for that. I, he's there all the time. I walk into meetings and things with the mayor and things, just not anything, but because of our position as a church and, and business leaders and all kinds of things and people that are more highly educated than me that have positions and title that, you know, all these titles and all these kind of things. And yet I don't ever feel like I'm the dumbest one in the room. <laughs> I don't know how to say that because I have an advantage and his name is Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm going to take that back. I do feel that way sometimes, but I feel like the dumbest person with an advantage, okay? I'm just, and that's okay. I'll be, I want to be honest with you, transparent. I, I walk into meetings and stuff. We're talking about finances and things way beyond my knowledge and, and looking at spreadsheets and all this kind of stuff, and we're in meetings with people and stuff. And I'm, I'm not, that's not my gift. That's not my skill set, but I have an advantage. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me make this decision. None of this makes sense to me. Help me make this decision. He's there. That's what he does. He is the helper. God, the Holy Spirit is currently active, moving and working in your life. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He's with you every day, every moment, every breath. He is there. You need to know that. John 14, 16 through 18 again. And I will pray the Father, ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, advocate, comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. Listen, if there is ever a day and age where we need truth, I don't even know what truth is anymore. It's fake news, fake this, fake that. Someone else. I need the truth, not your opinion of truth. Oh, I'm saying, I don't need your truth, I need the truth. I don't need my truth, I need the truth. Because what might seem right to man may not be right unto God. The Holy Spirit helps rightly divide between flesh and truth, the Bible says. I need truth. What's the truth here? This doesn't make sense to me. I know COVID this and COVID that and pandemics and all kinds of things. What is really the truth? What is the way? Holy Spirit, show me the truth, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot see, cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him, doesn't know him. But you know him. He dwells, he dwells with you and will be in you. You realize that the Holy Spirit, there's another working we'll talk about soon, but you know, the Holy Spirit will be with you for the rest of your life and on into heaven. That's how it can say, till the end of the day. He'll be with you always, to the end of the day. And I just wanna encourage you in that, we need the truth. I walk into a meeting, I need the truth, I need to know, and the importance cannot be understated. You need help, the Holy Spirit is my help. The Holy Spirit is my help. If you need help, if you need help in your business, ask the Holy Spirit. If you need help in your marriage, ask the Holy Spirit. If you need help with your kids, your teens, ask the Holy Spirit. And let me just say this to those that are parents of teenagers, we need the Holy Spirit, you need the Holy Spirit. Right, come on, teenagers are like, amen, pastor. Ask the Holy Spirit, I have a 22, 21 year old, ask the Holy Spirit. You need help in your relationships? Ask the Holy Spirit, quit asking your friends. Ask the Holy Spirit. He or she may not be the one, I don't care if he checks or she checks all the boxes, it may not be the one the Holy Spirit has for you. You want the one the Holy Spirit has. Dating, want to know who to marry? Ask the Holy Spirit. What church to go to? Don't come here just because the preaching's awesome. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, you're too kind, you're too kind. The Holy Spirit told me to say that. So. I don't want to grieve him, I better stop, right? <laughs> you make a spiritual decision. Right? That church is too big for me. That church is too small for me. What if the Holy Spirit wants you to be there? Maybe there's somebody there you're supposed to minister to. Maybe there's a way that your gift is needed in that body. 
They don't need me, they're too big. How do you know that? Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask him, hey, you won't hurt my feelings if this isn't the church for you because the Holy Spirit told you. You won't hurt my feelings if this isn't the church for you because of my preaching either, just by the way, I'll tell you that. But you need to make a spiritual decision. Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, what's God's will for my life? Ask the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know what, There's, I'm gonna say this, so, the importance of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has a lot to say, I mean, in the Bible, the Bible has a lot to say. You, you need to be in the Bible. That's how you learn and grow in your relationship with the Holy Spirit, that's part of it. But listen, when the Holy Spirit, talk, when the Bible talks about marriage, it doesn't tell you who to marry. But if you wanna know about marriage, you better get in the Bible. You better look at what a biblical marriage is. And you better look at what you're supposed to be in that biblical marriage, not what they're supposed to be initially, but that's part of it, but who you're supposed to be. The Bible will tell you what a biblical marriage looks like and how you are supposed to be in that biblical marriage, but it doesn't tell you who to marriage. Who does that? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does that. No, not them, not them, not them. They could be acting a certain way because they wanna be with you and then just revert back to their old way. But listen, it just checks all the boxes. Who cares? But everybody thinks, who cares what everybody, I care what the Holy Spirit thinks because he knows everything. He's gonna lead you in truth. You're looking for a job, what about this job? Bible doesn't tell you what job to take. The Bible will tell you how to be a good employee. Do it as under the Lord, have a good attitude. Bible will tell you and be respectful. Bible will tell you how to be a good employer. He's not gonna tell you what job to take. So when we're taking a job, I'm like, I don't think this is a job for me, how come? Well, they're not paying enough money. That one pays me more money. You know the job that pays you the most money may not be the job for you. Because there may be something required of you that the Holy Spirit knows that you don't know yet. But some temptation there, there might be some thing there that might not be to your benefit. The Holy Spirit just might want you to take a job for less money because you'll be a more of a blessing there. He can provide for you. He'll make up the difference. It's okay. God the provider. So God the Holy Spirit may tell you, don't take the one with the most money, take this one. I'll take care of that. I don't want you in that environment or in this environment. I need you to use you to witness to other people to be a light. I need your voice here. It, on and on and on it goes. Whatever area of your life that you wanna look at, it's important for us to understand that the Bible will give you a generality of things, but the Holy Spirit will tell you the specifics. That's his job. He's the helper. It's who he, who he is and what he does. And it's important for us to know that. Holy Spirit will tell you. And no matter where you are right now and what you're doing right now, the Holy Spirit can speak to you and tell you. And we need him. We need the Holy Spirit to come alive in our lives. That's why we say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Come flood this place with your atmosphere. Change the atmosphere. Why do we have a hard time with the Holy Spirit? After saying all that, I don't know other than we've heard what other people have said about it. it's being weird. We've seen people abuse it. We know there's churches that preach against it. No disrespect. That's between them and the Lord. I want you to open up and see through the truth of God's word who he is and how important he is for your life. And I want you to get it today or during this week because we're gonna build on it in the weeks to come. So don't miss any of those. Don't miss any of the installments. So my heart, my prayer today is Holy Spirit, lead me. Lead me today. Tomorrow when I wake up, Holy Spirit, lead me today. All the things that I have. Holy Spirit, give me the words to say. Holy Spirit, I need to hear from you. You know, you don't have to wait till Sunday to get a word from God. You can get it every single day of your life when you connect with him. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me not to be mean to my wife. Holy Spirit, help me. My wife, I thought she'd stand up and cheer on that one, but Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me not be mean to my kids. Holy Spirit, help me with my anger. Holy Spirit, help me with my unforgiveness. With my heart, my rejection. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me with my overwhelming emotions. Holy Spirit, help me. He's the helper. He's God. He's the helper. He's a good God, and he is a faithful God.